Amen. Amen. Woo, Jesus. I know this ain't no hot flash. I believe it's the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, he is doing some things in this place. I'm telling you, I just want him to speak through me. Um, I think it was the other day. I had like a little vision. And um, I saw myself walking in that door, but I was so teeny. You know, teeny walking. And I believe it's because I want him to shrink me. And I want him to be exalted and lifted up. And so um, just pray with me because I really, this scripture um, maybe a week and a half ago dropped in my spirit and I know it is the Lord. So I'm just, I don't know what he's going to say, but I know he's going to speak. So Father, we just honor you today. We just thank you for your word. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for salvation, Lord. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for everything that you want to do in the body of Christ. And Father, we honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I do anything else, I would like to welcome any first-time visitors. Are there any first-time visitors this morning? Would you stand and give us your name? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Charles Lake. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We just welcome you this morning. Oh, okay. Would you stand and, and give us your name? He pointed to you. We've seen her Wednesday, but I don't think she's ever introduced herself. So would you stand up and give us your name? What is it? Denise, we welcome you this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. I'm trying to. Got too many gadgets. Amen. I'm going to be reading this morning from Ephesians 4. And. Like I said, pray with me, bear with me, and just, you know, I'm just asking the Lord to just speak. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just have your way, Holy Ghost, have your way. And I'm going to read from the, um, the King James, but I also want to read from the message. That's why I have my son's tablet, because I really love how it puts it. But I'm going to start Ephesians 4. 11 and read until verse 16. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may, gr may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compact compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. 
And you say, might say, what you talking about? Because that's what sometimes I'll be saying. Okay. He handed out gifts of apostles, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. No prolonged infancy among you, please. Well, we'll not to tolerate babes in the woods, small children, who are an easy mark for imposters. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and tell it in love. Like Christ in everything, we take our our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. Amen. Wow, that is good. And um, like I said, as I was reading and there's um, three verses that really stuck out but the first one it says and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and I, I was reading one part portion and it says that he gave them their gifts and truly I receive my pastors as gifts and I believe that they have been put here to help build up, to equip us, to equip us. And what are we going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking we are so blessed and I'm not trying to make their heads big, but I really, I get the honor really of sitting in the office with them and just seeing them as men of God, truly men of God and godly wisdom. And I'm thinking, man, we have been given gifts. And they, they give us, they feed us every Monday, Wednesday, Sundays, every day. A lot of times that you're waiting by their car. <laughs> I need to talk to pastor. I need to see him. You know, they've been given as gifts to teach us to equip us, to help build up us. Not just so we can just sit here and say, well, I got a good word today. But I mean, what are we doing with everything that we've been given? What are we doing with all of the word? And I'm, I'm talking to me now. You know, I mean, this comes to me first. What am I doing with all that word? What am I doing with all that training I'm getting? I mean, because I watch them because I want to grow. I'm a baby still it's in some parts, but I want to grow. I want to I wanna do, you know, and talk like they talk. No, I'm not going to talk like they talk exactly. But I want to lead people to Christ. Yes. I want to be an example and a witness. Um, for me, the last couple of weeks, I guess I could say months. <laughs> um, I wrote down in my note, where, where has our focus been? And for me, you know, as we're being trained up, it says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, we're being raised up so that the ministry would flourish, so that people would know Christ. Not, uh, you know, to add to, oh, how nice your church is, or wow, I really felt the spirit. Praise the Lord. But we are to be drawing people to Christ. Drawing them to the answer. Drawing them, 
um, when there are things that are shaking in our lives. Pastor Jones said it this morning, man, as believers, you know, sometimes if somebody told you, once you say, yes, Lord, it's going to be easy, they lied. Because that's where the fight begins. And the, the one song we sing, this is how I fight my battle, it ain't with these, because see, I'm used to doing that. I can look at you a certain way and be ready to fight. But I'm learning to fight my battles with the word, with prayer. So getting back to um, us being built up. You know, these past couple of months for me, my focus has not always been on Jesus. Maybe I'm the only one here. You know, sometimes my focus is on how my kids are acting, how my knee is aching, and it's aching now. Where's the finances? I could tell you some stories. <laughs> And I mean, lately, you know, even being at restoration every day, just seeing the needs of not just the people, but seeing the needs of how a ministry runs financially, you know, um, what's needed. A lot of times we don't think, when I came through these doors, needing restoration, needing healed, needing deliver, I didn't think about the lights being kept on. I just thought, man, I need help. <laughs> well, before I thought that, I probably was looking around crazy, just to be honest. But I mean, I knew I needed help, but I wasn't focusing on how do the lights stay on, how do things run every day. Um, and so sometimes we can get, as we're being built up, we can get our focus off of Christ. Yeah. Off of, I wrote down, are we looking unto Jesus? And pastor quoted this, they talked about it this morning, Hebrews 12 too. Jesus is the author and the fi finisher of our faith. Are we looking unto him? Or are we looking at the bills are due? Uh, my son's acting out. I don't have enough for this. My body is in turmoil. I don't know how you're going to heal me. Are we looking unto him? Or are we stuck? And I think that for me, sometimes I get stuck. I get stuck. And so I thank God for the gifts that have been given to us that do lead by example. Pastor Jones was sharing his testimony this morning that it ain't easy. It ain't easy when you're trusting and you're believing and knowing God can do something by faith. But then we look at these, we look through these, these eyes. So I guess this morning if I had a title, <laughs> it would say, um, put your toys away. Now the reason why I said toys, I'm thinking about kids. You know, sometimes I'm like, hey, clean up, put your toys away, clean up. Get them away. Well, I'm telling us this morning, put your worries away. Put your, your uh, doubt away. Put your addictions away. Put your things that um, get you focused off of, off of Christ. And it puts you on sitting, as Sister Jones would say, in the corner chewing toilet paper. Worrying about this, worrying about that. So focused on the problem that we're not looking at the problem solver. So it says that these gifts, and I'm jumping around a little bit. The evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, they've been given to us for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. Now the body I was thinking about last night, man, Christ's body is whole, whole. You know, there's no breaks in it, he is whole. The body is to be whole as Christ is. But how can we be whole, Bonnie, if you're focusing on 
like Irvin said, what, how much is a check going to be in the mail? Instead of me focus on, on, I know you are provision. I know that you said you would never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. Now, and I mean, put, maybe your situation right now isn't finance, you know, but I can only speak from what I'm walking right now, what I'm going through. And um, I'm learning. Stop looking at that. Look at, at God. Look at Jesus. Remember those uh, times you sat in every Wednesday, every Sunday. Did you come just to take up the space? Or did you learn something? Now what did you do with what you learned? Because a lot of us, I mean, we come in the church for whatever, I'm hoping it's to know Jesus. I'm hoping it's to, to add to and get built up and build up and build up until, I mean, we are ready to burst to tell somebody about Jesus. To tell them he is a healer. To tell them that I don't care how your situation looks. And I'm telling you, in the years that have gone past in my life, Situations have looked rough. Situations have looked crazy. But God, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. And I mean, as long as I focus on that, as long as I focus on that I'm coming in and I'm being built up, I'm learning. I'm not the same person I used to be. I am changing. He is doing something in me. I'm not focusing on those heavy weights. So I just say to us this morning, put them toys away. Clean your toys up. You know, it says the, the one part um, that we are not to be that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind and doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. We're not to be believing everything that anyone tells you but what the word of God says. Or not even that. I'm looking at don't believe in what you see Amen. your physical eyes you better go beyond the to the spiritual you know because sometimes we get so locked in what I see well it ain't happening so it must not going to happen but it will happen so you know we're to be growing up we're not to be um, partaking in you know, our angry fits. You ever see a little kid take a fit? <laughs> I could do it. I mean, take a fit. And it could be over the stupidest thing. That's all of us. No, nobody, I'm not pointing no fingers because it is all of us. And I mean, it could be anything. It could be, oh, complaining. I think Pastor Jones talked about complaining a couple weeks ago. Complaining. Man, I can, oh, man, I can sing my own song of complaints. But I'm to be growing up. I'm, I, I want to remember that I'm coming through these doors, not just to say, oh, I got my ticket. <laughs> We, I don't know if you all remember, we used to give out tickets. For If you are in the program, we used to hand out tickets. So if you did your daily devotion, you did your work hours, remember? You get your ticket. You got your ticket. I'm not doing this for no ticket. I'm doing it because I want to grow. I want to know him. I want to, you know, at 50, well, hold on, I'm going to say 54, 53, let's keep it young. At 53, I ain't done yet. You know, sometimes, man, my leg has been just aching, and I know that's probably age, 
and probably some weight. <laughs> but I, I don't care if I go like this. <laughs> I want to go. You know what I'm saying? I want to go. I want to tell somebody. See, so many times we can give excuses. Why can't I do this? And I, oh man, I have been doing that a lot lately. A lot. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. You ever been there? I don't want to do it. Oh, Jesus, what if he said, I don't want to go to the cross? What if he said, I don't want to and I'm not going to? But he didn't. He did it anyways. And I believe that these gifts are training us in the way of not complaining, not murmuring. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not lifting them up. I'm just saying that they have been ordained to be here, to raise us up. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart. So he and he and them, the ladies also, because they're a part. They're training us up, training us up in the way that we should go. Well, we shouldn't just be comfortable and sit here, you know, what are you doing for Jesus? I'm talking to me. Yeah, okay, I work at Restoration. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. It's not enough. And yeah, I could, I could say, well, I'm going to busy myself with this busy my. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, really, get to yourself. As Pastor Jones would say, have a meeting with yourself. And really ask him, what next, Lord? What is next for me? What do you want me to do for you, Lord? I know sometimes I'm tired, Jesus. Sometimes I feel, wow, I'm, I'm weak. How am I going to raise these kids by myself? I get tired just like you do just like you do. We all have those areas where you say, I'm sick and I'm tired. But remember your training. Come on, Holy Ghost. Remember that you've came through these doors how many times? You've heard word after word after word. He has spoken. He's prepared you. That's exactly what it is. He's prepared you to go and tell somebody. I don't care if it's somebody in the grocery store. Just to say, how you doing? You doing okay today? Help me, Jesus, because sometimes I'm all into myself. Y'all ain't? Okay, just me. Whew. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm saying, Lord... Please help me because I get in myself, Lord. I get in myself where I complain, where I say, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But I remember that I've been called. I've been called to do something for you. And every one of us has something to do. You know, I was looking at this beautiful flower today. And look at all those little plants, all those little colors, I should say. But it's one. That's what we look like. You know, we all look different. We're all different sizes. But we've been given something to do. So I'm going to jump down. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of its itself is love. Jesus is the body. And like I said, he's whole. And we are to be like him. That's the ultimate goal. All your training. Every word you've been getting. What's it for? 
It's to be like Jesus. It's to be whole like Jesus. He's whole. He's not half. He's the whole body. And that's what our training is all about. Yeah, you know, yeah, we get frustrated. Yes, we get overwhelmed. Oh my goodness. Lately, you know, I had just been, it seemed like I picked up, man, overwhelm, if that's a word, overwhelmness. <sighs> but I'm telling you, I just, a couple of weeks ago when the ladies had that luncheon, something happened in that place. <laughs> And not only then, like I said, that was opening up. And I, I heard a sermon that night, and I got on my knees, and I said, Man, Lord, I didn't lost my hunger. So please help me. And I'm telling you, I ain't felt the same since. I have not felt the same since. Yes, it gets heavy some days. And some days, I, I'm, I'm like, Lord, you know, the answer is not always, I need to run off by myself but sometimes that is the answer <laughs> sometimes if you feel like yourself is going to get out out of sorts maybe you need to run to the bathroom maybe you need to run to the office and say I just need to sit for a minute I just need to reflect I need to think about my training thank you Lord I need to think about how you've been building me up Lord I need to think about how you've been bathing me in the word I, I need to think about how you love me and how you care for me and it gets me back to the focus of what am I here for what am I here for so don't forget you know when we and we're going to do it because we're human. It would be nice if I say, put your toys away and just throw them away. But that ain't realistic. <laughs> because those toys, which they're worried, which they're concerned about this and concerned about that, they're going to come back. You're going to be faced with those things on a day-to-day -day journey at times. But remember your training. Remember that you have been built up. Remember that you're to put away, you know, those childish things. We're not to be tossed back and forth. Well, what'd he say? What'd he say? What'd he say? You better get to knowing what he said. Because I'm telling you, if, if, you know, whoever your friends or family around, if they don't know, most of the time they don't. They're going to add their stuff. So it's best to go to what God is saying. It's best to go to the, the head. And the head is Christ. And, and I mean, I really thank him because so many times I falter. But I thank him for his grace. So many times, you know, I get, oh man, I'm weary, I'm tired, I don't want to do this. But I want to think about the training. I want to think about, and not just here. I mean, I've, I'm blessed that I not only got training here, but even before here. I mean, I, I've been in church all my life. So I didn't pick something up. <laughs> I hope. I didn't pick something up. Somebody was training me. Not only training me, I remember my you know, old pastor, and he's going to be with the Lord. But he trained me about mission, having a heart for mission. You know, and yes, I love to go to Africa, India. I've been blessed. Honduras, I've been blessed. But I also got a mission at home. <laughs> and home is sometimes the most difficult. Sometimes the most difficult with the people you got to see every day. You don't have to put on no airs for them people. Cause here I'm usually, I do like to put my lipstick on. Hey, how y'all the praise the Lord, how you doing? But at home I'll be like, clean them toys up. Did you, come on, get up. Oh, okay, I'm just telling you the real me. The real me. <laughs> and I'm telling you, even in that, 
The Lord is training me. I am saying, Lord, help me. I want to be like you. Some days I don't feel like being like you with my kids. Some days I just want to fuss and fuss and fuss. You ever been there that you can't take it out on somebody here at work so you can take it out on somebody at home? Jesus, help us. He's training us. But in that, don't get stuck. Keep your focus on, you're in training, Bonnie. You're in training. Remember, oh, you might have, maybe you got knocked down there. Maybe you said the wrong thing there or said that, had the nasty attitude. No, oh, y'all don't know nothing about that nasty attitude. Ooh, Jesus. But I am thankful for his grace. I'm thanking him that I can go to the side and say, Lord, help me. I cannot do this on my own. I will fail if I don't put you first. And I mean, that is in all of our lives. If you don't put him first, I don't even have to be a, a, a prophet to tell you, you gonna fall down. <laughs> if you don't put him first, if you keep putting you ahead and him back here, you gonna fall every time. Now I'm telling the truth. It's, don't it talk about telling the truth in here? I'm telling you. So, and I'm talking about Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, some of us have struggled for years with addictions. For years we've struggled. For years we've said, I'm going to read this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But if you don't put him first, you're going to fall every time. Now, I'm not saying what they tell you in recovery ain't nice, it's good. But if you don't put him at the head, you're going to keep going back, keep going back to touch that thing that you know you ought to keep your hands off. I'm talking to me too. That's right. We've all been there. All of us have been there where you know you couldn't stop. Well, just let me, let me just touch it just a little bit. I know if I just, oh, maybe if I just look at it. Huh? Maybe if I just look at it. Let me look. You better not look at it. You better run. Jesus. In Jesus' name. So we're being trained up. He is training us. We're not coming to church to look pretty or look, hey, I'm, I'm trying to meet my friend there. You better meet Jesus. I tell you, I could tell you, you better read my book. Let me quit. I'm telling you, meet Jesus. And no matter how many times we fall, he is right there. That is, that's to me amazing. You know, because I get sick of people. Whew. I get sick of them saying, oh, heck, they're here again, again. And then the Lord has to remind me, mm, look at you. You're here again, again, again. So I'm thankful for his grace, his grace. So don't you dare, I'm telling you, if you got to come through these doors, or for help 20 million times. You better keep on walking 20 million times and trust him, put him first, put him first. Remember, you have been trained up. We've been given gifts. And I'm telling you, everybody don't have gifts like we have them. Some of the gifts, you know what? Let me tell you a little bit. <laughs> Years ago when I was in a singing group, and the Lord bless me, I was in the singing group for 20 years. And I'm telling you, we used to go, we were young, young then, started at 16 and then, but man, we used to go to some churches and there was some pastors there. <laughs> oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you sure looking mighty fine. Y'all don't know nothing about that, so I'm blessed. I'm blessed with my pastors that I got. 
that are godly men. That are godly men. I'm not saying they're perfect because they're not. But they love the Savior. They're pointing to Jesus. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. So I'm telling you, as they're training us, you know, we're to be training somebody too. And I mean, oh man, kids, well you parents know, training, you never, your job ain't never done. Whew, never, seems like. And mine are still small. But you still always have that opportunity to lead them to Jesus. And I mean, that is the wonderful thing I know. That I'm always, with my kids, they're probably like, oh, here she goes. I'm always plugging Jesus. Hey, uh, my, he, he might not like it. But they'll go tell me about, hey, you know uh, this rapper? This rapper, he'll go tell me, hey, uh, rapper 69. I said, do you know Jesus? I said, I don't know. I don't care nothing about 69, but do you know Jesus? I, I don't care nothing about them uh, YouTubers. Because I got to hear that every day. Oh, such and such, they done did this. I'm like, I don't care about them people. Do you know Jesus? He's the one that's paying our bills. He's the one that I'm telling you, and I don't know how it's happening. Because on paper, on paper, I should be done. I'm telling you, on paper, I should be done. But I'm telling you, I serve a God. Oh, Jesus. I serve a God that I'm telling you, I can say, Lord, you know my situation. And I'm learning to get my hands off of it. And it isn't easy because sometimes I do fall back. But for the most part, I'm learning to say, I trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. But I trust you. And, and if I get my hands, soon as I get my hands off it, boom, he moves. And then I'm just like, whoa, how'd that happen? Well, you got your hands off of it. So in our training, let's remind each other. We're the body. Look how beautiful that, that flower is. Look how beautiful the body is. The body. So many talents. So many things that God has gifted you with that I cannot do. But you can. You can. So I mean, when you come through these doors, you remember. I didn't come just to say hi to Aunt Fanny. Oh. <laughs> Marilyn had an Aunt Fanny. I didn't come high just to, you know, but I came to be built up. I'm, I'm coming here to be trained. We ought to, and I don't always, so don't get it twisted. I don't always have my pen and paper, but we're, we're being trained. We're being trained so that we can tell somebody the good news. Y'all watch the news lately? It's a hot mess out there. A hot mess. And the people in the office think they got the answer. That's the scary part. It's Jesus who is the answer. It is him. So as we're being trained up, now it's time to do something with that training. So it's time for you to get to yourself and say, what is it now, Lord? You're not done with me. What is it now that you would have me do? You know, you could sit there and say, well, Lord, I could, and I'm going to use myself. Well, Lord, I got two kids. I've been divorced twice. Oh, Lord, my knee is aching. I could make all the excuses in the world. But I need to put them toys up. I really need to throw them toys out. Put them up and focus on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We thank the Lord for the word, the messenger. But what good is the message if you don't do nothing with it? When we were growing up, we used to have this great big old Bible. When you know, y'all seen them? Kind of like having over there. It sit on the coffee table. Psalms 23. And, and, and it sit. And if somebody got it out for 23, then somebody come back and put it back on Psalms 23. Nobody read it. They just wanted it on Psalms 23. I believe, thank you for your word. I believe, I, seriously, I believe this with all my heart. When I got saved, I was so happy. My wife and I, we was just jumping and turning some. We were happy. We were we were ready to go to heaven right then. We didn't want to deal with the world and all its craziness. We, didn't, we, we weren't even thinking about going to church. We just want to go straight to heaven. You know, we made it. We in. And as far as we knew, that was all there was. But I couldn't understand God because I didn't know if he put the we woke a switch on me or what. We got saved, but we didn't go to heaven. For some reason, we hung around. And we hung around, and we hung around, and we hung around. Because that was just the beginning. That God, in his infinite wisdom, needed you to hang around. To be equipped. So that maybe that joy and excitement and the deliverance that you felt when you came to Christ, that somebody else could experience the same thing. But if you went to heaven, they never would have got that opportunity. Maybe God needed you to be here and live in a certain neighborhood, a certain community, to be some salt or to be some light. Maybe this was all thought out way before we were born. That there was purpose for us. And I believe, from what I heard today, training has to have a purpose to it. There is a work for every believer in this world. Nobody said that you got to go to seminary for four years. And, but there's something these little things here can do. There's something this thing can do. There's something for every one of us. That's the message I heard. And that God is raising us up. And I don't know about you, but I got more bored when I just sit than I did when I said, God, use me. And I notice he began to raise us up through the pastors and teachers and other parts of the ministry because there was more for each one of us to do. I don't know where yet. I don't know, maybe you just thought it was coming to church on Sundays, maybe Wednesdays. It's more to it than that. Maybe you're waiting on the pastor to come and say, you know, sister or brother, God want to use you in the ministry. We need you to go work with the children. We need you to do, no, I'm sorry. I don't think that's our job. Our job is a heart that want to do, that God can touch. And then he can get you where you need to go. But if you're waiting on me to come tell you, you might be waiting a while. First, there's got to be desire, a heart. And I just believe right now. There's some of us, we've been sitting and we've been sitting. And God said, listen, I'm raising you up not to sit. He said, but I got to do all this. I got to do that. Listen, if you want to minister, God will let you minister. And he'll do it where you're at. Yeah. He'll train you. He'll get you ready. But you got to want to. 
as Leland would say, do you yonk to? Because if you don't yonk to, it ain't going to happen. You'll have an excuse. But if you're born again, there's a, you may not notice, but there's a tag, a pulling, a tugging on you. God says, I want to get you ready. But you have to answer to it. If there are, if you're here and you say, I don't experience any of that, I'm not even sure if I know Jesus. I don't even know if I'm born again or not. I got questions regarding it. Then probably I would say part of this service got something to do with answering that question. Because if you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, everything else has been said is a waste for you right now. This is for those who's come to know Jesus. You ain't got to be here long, but you got to have a desire to come. Listen, bow your heads. Let me ask you a question while your heads are bowed. If right this moment, and just in fact, by the end of this service, the Lord was going to show up and come back. And maybe a prophetical word came and said, God's getting ready to come, y'all. Could you say for sure, Lord, I know you. You knocked on my door of my heart and I said, come in, Lord. And I know you're living with me. I know you're in me and I know I'm in you. That's great. If you can't say that, if you're, you can't say, God, I can't, I don't know if you're living in me or if I'm in you and you in me, if, then right now is a good opportunity to fix that, to turn that around. He said, but what do I have to do? Just say, Lord, here I am. If you are struggling with that, could you do yourself a favor? Could you just raise your hands? That's the important thing, yes. That's the important thing. And no friend, no partner, not mama, not daddy, not grandma, not grandpa, not the pastor. When you stand before God, we won't be standing with you when God ask you you got to know for yourself here's what I'm asking you to do because you're among family and when you're among family you see we just simply accept you because you're family but would you stand to your feet for a moment